Thank you very much for tuning in uh, once again to this reflection. I want to talk to you today a little bit about Lent. Um, today is Fat Tuesday, so obviously tomorrow it starts uh, Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. So the next 40 plus days we'll be concentrating on our, our life with Jesus and uh, his call to conversion and repentance of our sins. So um, today I'd like to talk to you about how best to spend your Lenten season. Uh, there's lots of uh, ways we could be doing this, but I'd like to focus just on a couple of things. Um, I'd like to uh, invite and encourage us to be uh, people of deeper prayer, uh, 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 regular prayer life, uh, you know, living a life of prayer. Uh, it's, uh, it's really important for us to incorporate more prayer into our personal lives, into our daily lives, into our family lives. Uh, so that we're really connecting with, with uh, the Lord uh, through, through the means of prayer. One of the things that I have encouraged uh, most recently is the incorporation of more silence into our prayer life. Uh, not an empty, boring silence, but a really a reflective silence. <clears throat> um, the saints, you know, the, the, the great mystics of the church uh, have taught us, I think almost to a person, uh, that God speaks to us in silence. It's in those quiet moments when our minds are calm and our hearts are still, uh, where we've uh, tried to eliminate many of the distractions of our, of our busy, noisy lives, that God will often speak to us. And I've even found that in my own life, uh, that, <clears throat> that silence is, the, is principally the, the moment when, when if I'm alert to God, that he will lay something on my heart or, or put something in my mind. Uh, that's how God, I think, tends to speak to us. And so offering the Lord maybe five, ten minutes of just sitting quietly with our minds focused on, on God and trying to eliminate the distractions of our lives, that can be a beautiful way to, to deepen our prayer life and, 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 and as such to, to live uh, and to observe a, a more intense and, uh, and more fruitful and productive Lenten season. Uh, so, you know, try to give that some, some, uh, uh, some better, more space in your, in your daily life. I suggest getting up a little early. I'm a morning person, so that's easy for me. Uh, some people want to do that later, later in the day or throughout the day or at nighttime. Whatever would be best for you. Uh, but to try to go to a quiet place. Jesus said that, you know, go to your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father in private. And I would also add to that, pray to your Father in silence and uh, allow God to speak to you. Sunday is, uh, uh, is the day of the Lord, and Lent is, is, is really an opportune time for us to focus on that, uh, that one priority of our diocesan pastoral plan, which is reclaiming Sunday as the day of the Lord. I want to really encourage all our families, all of our people really, but especially families, uh, to work diligently toward uh, creating that space to have Sunday for themselves, for God first and the attendance of Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Uh, I really encourage that on Sundays. Uh, begin the day or spend that time, sometime during the day in prayer at the Mass. But then throughout the day to maybe uh, fast from technology, uh, computers or our phones or whatever other screen time that we might have, which really isolates us, but to focus on recreation, to focus on rest, spending the time together. This is how we used to do it in the old days. When I was a kid, you know, growing up on the farm, we, we spent Sundays together with, with our brothers and sisters, our parents, and we also went to our grandparents. I know that's not always possible uh, for people today, but if we have a greater intention of just taking this day, our Lord put one day a week uh, in, the, in our, uh, giving us one day a week for this essential rest and worship and and i think we'll find the benefits will be very very uh, very great for us so reclaim sunday as the day of the lord and and work on that during the lenten season this first sunday of of lent uh march 1st is is a special day in the diocese because it's the day that we always celebrate the rite of election this year uh, we're having the right, one rite of, of election for the whole diocese at St. James Church in Augusta. 
uh, and it's a big church and there's a lots of room, lots of parking and a wonderful space for a reception. So it won't be at the cathedral, which has normally been, uh, but we wanna try to gather all the people that are participating in the rite with our priests and our RCIA teams and coordinators uh, in one church so we can all be together to pray together and to choose these men and women and children for the Easter sacrament. So uh, let's pray for the uh, soon to be the elect, those that are seeking membership in the church through baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. They'll be chosen by me, the bishop, and uh, we'll incorporate them in our prayers throughout our Lenten journey. So uh, pray for, for all the elect uh, on this first Sunday of Lent. Also that Sunday, that Sunday morning at our cathedral, I'm offering uh, a mass, the 10 o'clock mass, the usual mass, but I'm doing it in uh, Latin, uh, praying the Mass in Latin, which has always been an option for us. Uh, it will be the Mass in the ordinary form, uh, which is our usual uh, particular form for the Mass, but it will be prayed uh, in the beautiful language of the church, the Latin language. We'll have the Latin chants, Latin hymns, and so forth. So I just would invite anyone who might um, uh, want to share that experience uh, to join us for the 10 o'clock Mass on Sunday at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. So uh, blessings everyone for a, a wonderful, joyful, uh, faith-filled, prayerful, uh, silent, and, uh, and, and intensely uh, beneficial, fruitful Lenten season. God bless you all.